Ever since House of X and Powers of Ten rejuvenated X-Men fandom in 2019, one of the most consistent questions I've heard has been what are the essential comics of the Krakoa era? Admittedly, my initial reaction was, read it all, you cowards. But even I can acknowledge that after a near five-year journey, that's a lot of comics, and not everything is vital to enjoying and understanding this fascinating era of X-Men. So, I've set myself the task of selecting the 10 collected works that best summarize the Krakoa-Hickman era of X-Men, and provide the most invaluable contributions to the grand meta-narrative and overarching plot. This would have been much easier if I could have made a list of 12, but unfortunately the X Office's insistence that Powers of X is pronounced Powers of Ten and X of Swords is pronounced Ten of Swords leaves me no choice but to take the Roman numeral way too seriously. This means the list will truly concentrate on contributions to the larger story, and some of my picks for best comics of the era will get left out as honorable mentions. If you feel Jumping around through the essential works is skipping too many comics. That's why I have the complete Krakoa era X-Men reading orders on Comic Book Herald. You will not find a finer selection on all of the interwebs. This guide is for those who want a relative fast track that captures the era's essence. To those who say even this fast track is too much, read more comics, you cowards. Hey, welcome. The 10 Most Essential Krakoa X-Men Comics Collections, I'm Dave Busing, Founder and Editor-in-Chief of ComicBookHerald.com. If you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting, and backing over on Patreon com at Patreon.com slash Comic Book Herald. Comic Book Herald Live, talking about the day's comics and what's going on in the world of pop culture. It's every Thursday now that I'm available, 5.15 Central Standard Time. You can check out live streams here on the channel. Bye subscribing. Some spoilers for discussed comics may follow. Otherwise, let's continue. Number zero, House of X and Powers of Ten. This is our central text, our Bible, and does not count towards the recommended reading as this is not merely recommended, but required. There's a case to be made that these are the best X-Men comics of all time. Jonathan Hickman, Pepe Larraz, R.B. Silva, and Marty Gracia, I and we salute you. Number one, Dawn of X, Volumes 1 through Volumes 3. Okay, this was not my initial first pick, but the more I thought about it, the more value I see in approximating what it was like to set foot into the possibility of the Krakoa era through the Dawn of X traits. Following the setup of the new status quo, with the sovereign island nation of Krakoa established as the home for all mutant kind, the Dawn of X kicked off with six launch titles exploring different facets of the new normal. In addition to Jonathan Hickman continuing his vision in the pages of X-Men and New Mutants, you have Marauders looking at rescuing mutant refugees from hostile nations, X-Force establishing Krakoa's security and intelligence branches, Excalibur developing Apocalypse's interest in mutant magic and other dimensions, and Fallen Angels not getting the memo <laughs> and doing a solo Quanon story. Not all these books are going to hit, and some, honestly, I would actively not recommend it. But through these trades, you get the first three issues of each, and that sense of wonder about how creators will be playing in the Krakoan playground from here on out. Nothing quite matches that. This is a good to great sample platter approach too, to help you know which books you might want to continue with for your own enjoyment. For example, if you find that the first six issues or three issues of Excalibur are really to your liking, you're interested in Apocalypse and Butan Magic, that series goes for over 30 issues, and you can keep on reading. Now you will know the ins to exploring the Krakoa era in more depth than you otherwise would have. Number two on the list, Hickman's X-Men. When I started tracking a reading order for every X-Men title after Hoxpox, it was under the title Hickman's X-Men Reading Order. Marvel fans have come to expect a singularly focused vision from Hickman, one of the most celebrated American comics writers of the 2000s, which he established so successfully from 2008 to 2016 with work across Fantastic Four, Avengers, and 2015 Secret Wars event. So while we have to point out comics are a collaboration, and the storytelling genius of Pepe Larraz, R.B. Silva, Marty Gracia, and the team make House and Powers knockout hits, Hickman's profile and shadow set the expectation for fans. If Hickman wrote it into the X-Men narrative, it simply felt more vital. Unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, Hickman left the X-Men franchise in 2021, around the midway point of what has subsequently been relabeled the Krakoa era. We'll never quite know what the full story would have looked like with Hickman on board through the conclusion. Prior to that point, though, 
Hickman wrote a 21-issue X-Men run, four issues of New Mutants, and five giant-size X-Men one-shots. These are all collected in an X-Men by Jonathan Hickman omnibus and vital to the development of the Krakoa era. And oh, by the way, all 10 selections here are listed in the show notes with links as well as a link to the comic book herald post where you can easily find access to all of these x-men collections number three on the list ten of swords the krakoa era's first crossover event focuses on the history of apocalypse krakoa remember x-men are living on a sentient island nation and the seeds hickman and teeny howard had been planting across x-men and excalibur the event gets long-winded in places but the core is essential to krakoa as you've seen, I'm always an advocate of reading more comics, but you can pretty sensibly fast-track this event by just reading the core X-Men issues and the three main Ten of Swords issues, Ten of Swords Creation number one, Ten of Swords Stasis number one, and Ten of Swords Destruction number one. If, of course, you want a reading order for it all, no better place to look than comicbookherald.com. Number four, Hellions. Hellions is the greatest unlikely success story of the Krakoa era, taking the ragtag team of Psylocke, Havoc, Wildchild, Scalp Hunter, aka John Greycrow, Nanny, and Orphan Maker, putting them under the court-ordered leadership of Mr. Sinister, and setting Krakoa's problem children off on suicide missions like some kind of squad. This could have been an absolute disaster, but with Zeb Wells writing career-best comics comedy and artists like Steven Segovia knowing exactly how to balance the blend of pathos and humor, Hellions makes a case for best comic of the entire era. It's the lone entry here that makes it on quality alone, although there are continuity-relevant developments for Sinister, a key player of this era. Number five, the Al Ewing X-Verse. Okay, so... Technically, an omnibus collecting Al Ewing's work across Sword and X-Men Red doesn't exist yet, but it will one day because these comics are too damn good not to combine. Sword ran for 11 issues before transforming into X-Men Red, which is slated for an 18-issue run prior to Ewing ending his saga with the resurrection of Magneto in early 2024. That accounts for arguably the best 30-plus issue run in the Krakoa era. Sword and X-Men Red are vital to establishing how Krakoa interacts with the universe at a cosmic level, including intergalactic politics and the development of planet Arako, aka the artist formerly known as Mars. On top of that, Ewing does masterful work with characters like Magneto, Storm, Abigail Brand, and yes, Wizkid. Great comics and essential, the best of all worlds. Number six on the list, The Hellfire Gala, Volume 1. In mid-2021, after Ten of Swords, the real-world delays caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the X office introduced fans to an annual tradition of Hellfire Galas, banquets put on by Emma Frost and Mutant Kind, inviting dignitaries, heroes, and allies the world over to celebrate Krakoa and announce what's to come. The showcases communicated the new X-Men team rosters, and in the case of the first Hellfire Gala, announced to the world in incredible Pepe Larraz style that mutants were terraforming Mars and renaming it Planet Arako, capital of the Soul System. It's one of the most memorable single issues of the Krakoa era, and absolutely vital to understanding the journey. Number seven on the list, Inferno and X-Lives and X-Deaths of Wolverine. Here is the flashpoint. No, not that one, not the DC one. The moment Hickman's X-Men officially ends and readers are thrown into the next phase of things. Inferno marks Hickman's final four issues, a mini event in which Orcus makes a play to tear apart the secret mutant leaders Moira X, Magneto, and Professor X, and the secrets of Moira's mutant abilities to relive lifelines with the knowledge of how things played out in past lives are revealed to uh, other Krakoan mutants like Destiny, Mystique, Emma Frost, Doug Ramsey, and Krakoa themselves. After deliberately avoiding his biggest story from Hox Pox, Hickman finally returns in triumphant style, teasing some new mysteries for the likes of Omega Sentinel and Nimrod within Orcus. The event was immediately followed by the Benjamin Percy-written X-Lives of Wolverine and X-Deaths of Wolverine, two intermingling five-issue event books focused on, yes, Wolverine and the fallout of Moira X on the run from Krakoa. I don't fault Percy for the attempt. Somebody had to step up and try to take on what came next for Moira, and it took guts to do it. But this became a make-or-break book for many readers, including myself. Something vital was lost here, and it's a hard work to recommend on its own terms. Nonetheless, you have to know what happens in these events to fully understand where the Krakoa era 
goes from here. Number eight, the Kieran Gillen X verse. It's my party and I'll cheat if I want to. Fresh off a wave of creator owned success, Die Once in Future, for example, and the most effective Eternals comics in Marvel history, shouts to Jack Kirby, Kieran Gillen stepped into Krakoa's Destiny of X, and alongside Al Ewing, reestablished a sense of ambition and focus with the excellent Immortal X Men. The great run built towards a Marvel Universe event in Judgment Day, which successfully placed both the X Men and Eternals at center stage in the alternate reality madness of Sins of Sinister to come. For my money, you have three creators who played the biggest role in saving the post Hickman Krakoa era, and they are Al Ewing, Victor Laval, and Kieran Gillen. Number nine, The Fall of X. I have a lot of complicated feelings about Jerry Duggan's massive role in the post-Hickman Krakoa era of X-Men. Ben Percy is actually the only writer with more comics contributed during this time frame. But the one thing nearly everyone can agree on is that Duggan brought his A-game for the Hellfire Gala specials. That was true yet again in 2023, as the year's Hellfire Gala initiated the fall of X and set up Orcus's grand scheme to utterly destroy mutant kind and Krakoa. This is the beginning of the end. A long time coming, and it's devastating for the mutants of Marvel. The collected edition includes the free comic book day setup and the Hellfire issue, but doesn't include Duggan's follow-up in X-Men number 25, which I would highly recommend as well in terms of giving you a sense of what the fall of X is and has been like for Marvel's Mary Mutants. And number 10, on the list, the final book to come, Fall of the House of X, Rise of the Powers of Ten. Brings us full circle to the end of Krakoa with two five-issue titles calling back to the books that started it all. Jerry Duggan and Lucas Wernick will be telling the fall of the House of X with Kieran Gillen and a returning R.B. Silva on Rise of the Powers of Ten. There you have it. That's the Krakoa X-Men comics wrapped up in ten selections. Hope you survived the experience, hope it was helpful, and enjoy the comics. Comic Book Herald is supported by Patreon supporters. Thanks to those of you in the Mysterious Benefactors tier. One of your benefits for supporting Comic Book Herald at this level is you get your name shouted out on videos. Thank you, Jess W., Chris Merkvicka, Roosh, Mike Solomons, Tree91, and Marcus. Thanks so much for your constant and consistent support. You can go to patreon.com slash comicbookherald for ways to support yourself. I'm Dave. You can find my stuff at Comic Book Herald pretty much anywhere on your look. Check out the CPH live streams here on YouTube. Check out the best comics ever on my Marvel this year podcast for more from me. And as always, as always, enjoy the comics. <laughs>